Safe air testers are designed to provide a quick and easy method to carry out accurate periodic testing of breathing air supplies. The European standard for breathing air quality is EN12021, which should be referred to in conjunction with any overriding national standards. This training session features the F4500, which is designed primarily for use on airline systems up to 10 bar, but can also test high-pressure charging systems when used in conjunction with the F3002 high-pressure regulator. The F4500 has a colour touchscreen display and is supplied in a hard, weatherproof case with storage provision for a wide range of accessories and equipment. It's primarily designed to be used from within the case. However, the tester can also be removed and operated separately where space is at a premium. F4500 safe air testers are fitted with internal lithium rechargeable batteries and in addition also have a battery tray which accommodates six AA batteries packed separately. In the event that the rechargeable batteries are not sufficiently recharged, then you can continue to use the instrument with either the alkaline AA batteries or mains power supply. The alkaline AA batteries must be installed with the unit turned off and it's important to strictly observe polarity and ensure that they're correctly located. If the tester is to be used adjacent to a power socket, the mains adapter may be used. Please note that the unit should be switched off prior to connection or disconnection of the main supply. The test is carried out using the Draeger impactor for oil and chemical reagent tubes for carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and water. These are supplied in packs of 10 per type and the chemical reagent tubes show the degree of contaminant present as a colour change to the crystals that they contain. The extent of this is read against a scale on the tube. For the impactor, the degree of oil contamination is displayed on a screen. To carry out a test, first switch on the machine by pressing and holding the on button which is on the right hand side of the unit for approximately 3 seconds. The display will show the model, then the serial number, date last calibrated and whether it's within the recommended calibration period. Press the arrow key to progress to the main menu where the current date and time will be displayed. To change the default settings such as date, time, language and units of measure, enter the configure tester screen. To carry out a test, press the begin test button. The unit will then automatically calibrate the oxygen cell against the surrounding atmosphere. The unit therefore needs to be in a well-ventilated area. You now have the option of entering a description for the test location. If you wish to use numbers, press the function button. Push the right arrow button when you're ready to proceed. Select oil type, impactor or oil mist. The F4500 can test for the presence of oil using the original oil chemical reagent tube or the impactor. The impactor has the advantage of not containing any hazardous chemicals. It detects all mineral and synthetic oils and clearly determines oil concentration levels. This training video is based on using the impactor. The unit has four test programs available. Airline systems up to 40 bar, high pressure systems up to and including 200 bar, high pressure cylinders above 200 bar, and high pressure charging compressors. All of the high pressure tests require the use of the F3002 regulator, which has a DIN connector that can accept input pressures up to 300 bar. This training video is for airline systems below 40 bar. Select the appropriate water range, 50 to 2,000 mg per cubic meter is for standard airline systems with a refrigerant dryer or no dryer and 5 to 200 mg per cubic meter is for systems incorporating desiccant dryers. When checking an airline system, ensure that the flow control valve is fully closed and then connect to the air supply to be tested. Ideally, this should be done by using the hose which normally supplies the breathing apparatus. Fit the appropriate adapter to the tester first and then connect the supply hose to the adapter. An F2193 female connector is supplied with the unit. 
This terminates in a CEJN compatible plug and enables users to connect to some of the most popular BA systems. Alternative pre-made adapters for other BA connections are available from Factair. Please note that a test can be carried out at any pressure between 2 and 10 bar. If the unit is overpressurized, it will automatically shut down and display an overpressure warning. It will then need to be returned to the manufacturer for checking and resetting. Input pressure will be displayed on the gauge and the adjacent display. System pressure will automatically default to this reading. If the breathing air system is distributed at a different pressure to that being displayed, this should be entered at this stage. It should be noted that the pressure dew point will be calculated on the recorded system pressure. Press the arrow key to proceed. We can now confirm the flow and pressure is adequate for your respiratory protective device. Adjust the system's flow control valve so that the flow meter registers the required level. Check the pressure is sufficient for the breathing air equipment being used. It's recommended that this flow is left running for the duration of the test to simulate the conditions of use. Press the arrow key to proceed if the flow and pressure meet the minimum requirements for your RPD. Carry out the odour test by smelling the air exhausted from the sintered outlet. If there's a serious odour problem, fail the sample at this point of the test. Initiating flows of seriously contaminated air through the tube ports could result in damage to the unit. If the odour test is satisfactory, press the arrow key to continue. The unit will now commence a five-minute purge sequence, during which time an airflow will be passed through all four ports. This clears contaminants from previous tests and ensures that a representative sample is being tested. Once the purge has finished, the Draeger tubes can be prepared for insertion. Remove both ends using the cutter provided. This ensures a clean cut is made and that glass fragments do not fall into the tube ports. The Draeger tube tip cutter has three cutting blades. Insert the tube into the hole and gently rotate. Then rotate the tube to the side to break the tip. The tube tip will be retained within the cutter for later disposal. As each tube is prepared, it should be inserted into the relevant gland with the arrow pointing away from the unit and tightened firmly. The impactor should be inserted into the oil port. Make sure the impactor has an intact protective seal. This seal must remain in place for the duration of the test. Once the tubes and impactor have been inserted, press the arrow key to start the test. The duration will be displayed as a countdown together with ambient temperature, oxygen content and pressure. For airline systems during the test, the flow control valve should be set to the flow rate of the RPD being used. This will ensure the system is tested under the same conditions as it would normally be operating. The status of individual tests is indicated on the display. The clock symbols indicate tests are active and ticks that tests are complete. The unit can be left until the test time has elapsed. Once the test is complete, close the flow control valve. The readings from the three tubes and impactor can now be entered. Instructions on reading detector tubes and their safe disposal can be found in the documentation wallet. Remove the impactor and peel off the protective seal. The impactor incorporates a series of three horizontal rows of nozzles. Any oil present in the air sample in an aerosol form and greater than a concentration level of 0.05 mg per cubic metre will be deposited on the display screen as a series of small dots. Each of the three rows has a different distance between nozzles and their spacing is calibrated to represent different concentration levels of oil 0.1, 0.5 and 1.0 mg per cubic metre. 
When the dots on each row form into a continuous line, then it identifies that the concentration levels for that line have been exceeded. For this particular test, there are no dots present, so the oil concentration level is less than 0.05 mg per cubic metre. As the maximum permissible concentration level in breathing air is 0.5 mg per cubic metre, we know that for this test, it's a pass. The following pictures, however, are examples of tests where there has been oil present. The first picture shows dots present on each of the three rows, but as you can see, none of the three rows have joined into a continuous line, so we know the oil concentration level present is greater than 0.05, but less than 0.1 mg per cubic metre. This would therefore still be a pass on a breathing air test to EN12021. On this second picture, the bottom row of dots have formed into a continuous line, but the middle and top rows are still individual dots. Therefore, the concentration level for this test is greater than 0.1, but less than 0.5 mg per cubic metre. Again, this would still be a pass, but only just if it was a breathing air test to EN12021. On this third picture, both the bottom and middle row have formed into continuous lines. Therefore, the concentration is greater than 0.5, but less than 1.0 mg per cubic metre, and this would be a failure for a breathing air test. On this final picture, all three rows have formed continuous lines, and the concentration level is now in excess of 1.0 mg per cubic metre, and once again, a failure for a breathing air test. To enter the carbon monoxide reading, press the CO button and remove the corresponding tube from the test port. If the test sample contained carbon monoxide, a greyish stain will be present at the start of the white crystals on the CO tube. The extent of this must not be greater than 5 parts per million for the European standard EN12021. The maximum level of carbon dioxide permitted in breathing air is 500 ppm. The concentration is represented as a purple stain at the start of the CO2 tube. The water tube shows the amount of moisture present in the sample as a brownish stain on the yellow crystals. This is measured against the scale in milligrams per cubic metre. If you selected 50 to 2000 milligrams per cubic metre at the beginning of the test, the instrument will automatically multiply your inputted reading by 10. Once you've keyed in the result, press the arrow key to return to the Enter Tube reading screen. As each reading has been entered, their input box will turn green. Once all results have been entered, press the right-hand arrow key to proceed. When you proceed beyond this point, the results cannot be altered. Spent tubes should be placed in the container provided for disposal in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions when convenient. The test complete screen automatically determines whether the test was a pass or fail and displays all the measurements recorded during the test. If the test was a fail, exclamation marks would be indicating those criteria which did not meet the standard. For airline systems less than 40 bar, the pressure dew point, i.e. the point at which water will begin to condense into a liquid form in the airline, must be at least 5 degrees centigrade below the lowest temperature at which the system will be used. The F4500 automatically calculates the pressure dew point from the water content you previously entered and system pressure. It compares this to the ambient temperature to determine whether it was a pass or fail. This test result is automatically recorded in the instrument's memory, which can store up to 20 previous tests. To view these tests, return to the main menu and press the Review Tests button. Test results are stored accordingly to the date and time they were completed. From this menu, previous tests can be viewed or deleted as required. To disconnect the tester from the system, make sure you leave the inlet adapter on the instrument and only disconnect at the end of the supply hose. The adapter can then be disconnected afterwards if required. To turn the unit off, 
Return to the main menu and press the power key in the top right corner.